going on, guys? We got spring training in effect, but not here on Simple Man's Comics because we are in full mid-season form on the Bolo Show, coming at you every week with those new comic book day releases where we're talking first appearances, reader buzz, variant buzz, and a long-term play. Rumor has it there's other lists out there floating around, but this is the list that matters most, and we're going to talk about it right now. But Jack, how was your new comic book day? Brian, this is a pretty cool new comic book day, to be honest with you. I know some people are going to be all over the place. Um, when you have such polarizing topics like the uh, the stuff going on with Punchline. But for me, as somebody who just enjoys the hobby, it's kind of exciting and fun to see these kind of things happen. Yeah, I hear you, Jack. I have my own opinion on the whole hype that's going on. But either way, getting people into the stores, buying books, reading books is a plus for the hobby. So I'm all for it. But last night, we had that three up, three down, and we also kind of had a special announcement, didn't we? We did. You know, I got my uh, Simpleman's Comics exclusive Patreon hoodie on right now, and I got to tell you, uh, ever since we've been working with this new design team, it's really kind of amplified our merchandise collection, and we wanted to kind of take this to the next level and bring this to those in our Simplements Comics family. Um, it's something that we've heard in the comments section, whether it was here on the channel or Instagram or uh, Facebook or anywhere else where you see us on social media that you guys wanted um, more and better merchandise. And we wanted to answer that call and staying with this theme of this limited release we're excited to announce two new shirts that will be available for pre-order throughout the month of March. Yeah, so if you head over to simplemanscomics.com forward slash swag, you can check that out. We'll also put the link to that in the description and a card up above right now. But everyone's here for that bolo list, so let's not deny them, and let's get into it right now, huh, Jack? Absolutely. And we're going to get into it first with those first appearances. Last week, we had a little bit more of that first appearances. But we also talked about quantity over quality. Shorter first appearances this week. And we're going to get into it right now, starting with Wolverine number one. This is a book that had a bunch of issues for it. You know what? I've been watching Narcos. I watch Narcos Mexico on Netflix. Here it looks like we get Narcos Krakoa, huh? <laughs> That's right. Um, interesting take. I think it's a unique um, kind of landscape to put Wolverine in kind of different than some of the other Wolverine stuff. I, so I like it. I honestly thought it was, I went into it kind of jaded, right? You know, we get, we had this death that none of us believed was going to be long-term. This was a contractual thing with Fox and Disney and, and uh, you know, the Marvel publishing branch. And we kind of knew that. And here we are, and we've got a launch of a new Wolverine number one. And there's a million variants. And don't get me wrong, there's some amazing cover art but you just after a while right the inflated cover price because this is this is what 7.99 book brian yeah i believe so so um you're looking at a 7.99 book you're looking at a book with a bunch of covers um it, it just feels cash grabby but i actually think that this first issue delivered and i'm not really surprised because i think benjamin piercy is a really talented writer and kind of an undercover writer um and then as far as we talk about variants you can say pick your poison with um some of the talented artwork that you get you get the del Otto, um one in 50 you've got the alex ross cover but for me those jim lee um remastered variants are absolutely amazing um the high ratio stuff they that stuff seems to do well retaining uh value over time um so i, I really dig it um at the same point you know like i said i have my kind of ills about these kinds of releases at the same point that's it for the first appearances there was one other on the list but we have that saved we're going to talk about that in a little bit so now we're going to get into the reader buzz then the first one we have on the reader buzz this week is deceased unkillables this has those three covers for it i like the matina cover but it also has that petri horror cover we've talked about those before on this channel what do you think of this book jack yeah, I'm, I'm the same way. I tend to lean towards those Matina covers. The Red Hood cover for this issue is amazing. Um, Tom Taylor, though, the writer, is really kind of um, not getting the credit I feel like he deserves for this whole deceased universe. We were very critical, like a lot of people were critical when this came out. It seemed to come out right around the time that Marvel was bringing back, um, you know, the... Uh, zombies. The, yeah, the zombies and, the, and that whole universe. And I don't know which one came before first whether it was the deceased or that but you know it's one of those things where it just sort of started to feel like 
this is just one of those things that's being done because horror is hot right now. How many times have we said that on the channel? Horror is hot. So I feel like they overcame that with great storytelling. I actually really enjoyed that series. I went into it really kind of jaded. I, the second time I've used this word on this channel, but this is what happens. I feel like when you're, um, you're in comics for so long, you get to a point where sometimes maybe you can kind of get salty and then something has to kind of knock you off your feet. And I felt like Deceased did that. I think they really delivered a fun story. So I'm excited to read. I didn't get a chance to read this one today. I'm excited to, to read it. Um, I hate miniseries. I really enjoy reading them maybe in, in kind of like that binge format. But um, at the same point, this is one I, I'll definitely be checking out issue to issue. And again, I, the Matina covers are fun. The Putri uh, covers, I think, started strong and kind of weaned a bit. Um, but the Matina covers have consistently delivered. Then the next one we're talking about is Bang Number One from Dark Horse. It even has a great review on the cover from John Wick himself, Keanu Reeves. This, I read this book. I was kind of interested in it. I was wondering where I was going, but it's kind of sci-fi meets James Bond to me. And I enjoyed the first issue and look forward to picking no number two up. Yeah, real interesting to see Keanu Reeves reading a Matt Kent book in advance um, and giving that kind of advanced review that that kind of seems to have people excited on the secondary market. Also, we've got already talk about Bang getting optioned. Remember, Dark Horse has that first look deal with Netflix that makes it real seamless to take something from the pages to our streaming service. Um, and I kind of felt like you did, Brian. I went into this with really high expectations, I think, and maybe I was underwhelmed, but uh, it's still one that I'm, any books you got to give, it takes a while to kind of build that world and that story. Um, not every, it, I really just want to be intrigued with a first issue. I didn't necessarily feel like I got everything I wanted out of this one, but at the same point, I, I really enjoy Matt Kent and I'm going to give him this, this run. I think this, I think this will be a good story, and as this kind of assassin stuff is just cool. This is this is kind of like my type of comic. Yeah, I mean, we mentioned John Wick, but it actually has kind of a Matrix type feel to it. Yeah. Then the next book in the reader buzz this week is Flash Forward number six. Yeah, so I stopped reading this after issue number one. I fell off. I needed I need to jump back on. Um, I will be the very first to admit that. And I've been told that this follow-up to Heroes in Crisis, which is now telling the story of Wally West. And if you haven't read Heroes in Crisis, like, I don't want to totally spoil it for you because it's essentially a mystery story. Um, but, you know, Wally West is ha left having to deal with the results. So Wally is now in this flash forward. This issue got late reader buzz. Um, I, I It was allocated on a lot of websites too. Yeah, I feel like um, I'm not doing my job or, or to you guys because I don't really know why. I, I don't really know what happened within the issue. Um, but this one got started getting posted late. There were a lot of people um, talking about it. I think there was maybe even some spoilers out. So I don't know. This might have been the last issue in the, in the miniseries, um, which, of course, usually, you know, you can get some kind of reveals. But uh, this has gotten great reviews. I'm just behind so behind there's so many comics that come out that you want to read and you want to get into especially with the world of independent comics i'm where, stuck on issue i'm still on issue three i gotta catch up myself yeah yeah so you know i feel bad because i was really excited to read this coming out of heroes in crisis and i just i just didn't keep up with it so i've got a few issues uh sitting in a box to read and i just haven't gotten to them yet plus some of these i mean i'm not making any excuses i need to catch up but some of these are better reads in trade well, and I, again, I do enjoy a lot of it, especially the minis that way. Um, I think because it's a complete story. So yeah. to get it from beginning, middle, and end in one sitting, I think sometimes is kind of the more satisfactory way to, to get a story, um, you know, an ongoing with multiple arcs where you're trying to build over time. You know, it, the month to month can work better than in a binge format, but I like it for these miniseries. Yeah, speaking of trades, stay tuned because we got some trade paperbacks we're going to give away tonight, as well as announce our winner from last week's contest. But going back into the reader buzz, we're going to talk about plot number one. This is from Vault Comics, and we're talking about that black and white edition. I like this. They're going back to it again. We saw them do it before with the Savage Shores. But either way, plot number one has been a fantastic series, and a lot of people are out there looking for that black and white. Yeah, I would venture a guess that that's been Vault's secondary market best received books these savage shorts and the plot 
Um, so it's no surprise to me that they both get this black and white vault lines variant trim, which is unique, right? Because they don't, vault doesn't count this as a printing. What I mean by that is it's not a second, third, fourth printing. Yeah, it's called black and white edition. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and it's part of the vault lines line of um, books where they're, you know, again, they're aiming to show you the, the real raw drawing. Um, it's really, I have the These Savage Shores one. I've ordered the plot. I haven't got it in yet. The These Savage Shores is is really it's a stunning book to kind of go through and um to see that kind of um throughout the book the art process but i i think that these are cool um i don't know secondary market if they'll ever truly rise in value yeah these savage shores that, that saw some interest when it first came out but yeah right now it's it's not yeah. like a hard sought after book it was like a ten dollar book i remember yeah. 10 15 i think it's well, a five six dollar book at this point but um with that and the rumors about getting optioned, anything is possible. I don't think the plot will go in the same direction. But at the same point, where are these going to be looked at? Are they going to be looked at like variants? Or are they going to be looked at like those like director's edition that Marvel or DC do? I think it'd be closer to director's edition or director's cut or however you want to say it. But I would guess I would guess so too. I just think that they're frankly cooler and maybe better kind of like put together than those director's cut issues. The director's cut issues are very informative. They're great reads. Um, this is more of a kind of stunning visual type book. Very minimalistic, but very cool yeah. at the same time. Yeah. And we're gonna stick with indies. I love seeing some indie love in the reader well, bus section, but- This is the list for indie comics. We have just about every indie publisher represented on this week's Bolo list. The indies were coming hard this week. And with that, we're going to talk about Savage Bastards number one from Mad Cave Studios. Yeah, so this is one that we talked about a while ago. Um, it's kind of went under the radar a little bit. And it's funny even, and, and this is kind of like a behind the scenes full disclosure thing, back when we were with CBSI and we were putting together the Woven Heart variant, we had several books pitched to us as possibilities. And this was like, oh yeah, and we got a Western. And like, we kind of like, the name was kind of cool, right? Kind of sounds like Southern Bastards. It's kind of similar, um, but Western. And it, there weren't any ideas that necessarily popped into mind. It was, Mad K didn't really give us the hard sell on the book. Um, and we went in another direction with Wolven. Um, the funny thing is about, when we talked about this with Knights of the Golden Sun on Three Up, Three Down. When there isn't this major push, right? Because like Over the Ropes, had a lot of buzz before it got released. Um, what was the one that was right right before that? Wolven Heart. Wolven Heart had a lot of buzz right before it got released. So they their print run numbers crept up. And again, nothing compared to what we see with Marvel, DC, even Image or Boom. But for Mad Cave, larger numbers. This one, I think, will be more towards the realm of some of those original releases like Knights of the Golden Sun and... Um, and on our cars. Now, I could be wrong, but that's just the feeling I'm getting from seeing in the market. And we're getting that with the way that these copies are kind of drying up. A lot of people said they never even saw that book on release day. That's what we heard back with those books. Now, will the demand drive this book up on the secondary market? I don't know, because right now it's selling for about $5 plus shipping. People seem to be willing to pay 8 or $9 ship that get it in. Uh, but it's available on eBay for cover price plus shipping. I'm sure Mad Cave's website, um, there's a good chance has some. They, they, you know, being that it's New Comic Book Day today, by the time you guys see this, it'll be Thursday, the day after New Comic Book Day. But they usually are pretty good at having books for a few days. Um, but at the same point, this is a book that's been well received by people who have read and reviewed it. The, the early reviews for this book, and I think that drove some of these like online sellouts that we saw, like like Midtown, is due to that reader buzz and, and the review buzz that, that this book garnered. And Mad Cave has put that out consistently. They've, they've delivered books that people have, once they checked them out, um, they've really enjoyed them. The name of the game for Mad Cave is getting their books in front of as many people as possible who can read these books and realize the amazing quality that they're putting out right now. Right, and they got a pretty sweet Comics Pro variant for this book. Yeah, so. yeah Comics Pro coming up this week. Yeah. And also, I mean, last night we talked about it on 3 Up, 3 Down. We talked about Knights of the Golden Sun kind of being down right now. And 
Lo and behold, today, Mad Cave alone put out a press release saying Knights of the Golden Sun is coming back this fall, as well as Honor and Curse. That's right. We're going to get both of these series coming back again, like we kind of anticipated, right? We said this, that we felt like this was going to happen. They were too popular to begin with, not to come back and give us more story. And again, that's why now's the time to be looking at Knights of the Golden Sun as we're getting ready for that next volume. And if you weren't able enough to get the issue, one through seven of Knights of the Golden Sun or one through six of Honor and Curse, you're in luck because Mark London from Mad Cave Studios sent us some trade paperbacks to give away. And we're going to do just that on this show. And we're going to give away two sets. We're going to give away Knights of the Golden Sun and Honor and Curse Volume 1, as well as our old comicbookinvest.com Honor and Curse Mauricio Villarreal variant. These were out of 500. So we're going to give away, I got two sets of these, right? So two trade paperbacks and an exclusive variant. And then what are they going to have to do to win, Jack? Well, let us know what Mad Cave Studios releases that you have read. And if not, let us know if you're, if you haven't read any, let us know if you're seeing them in your shop, but let us know what the Mad Cave presence is in your area. Are you reading it? Um, and are you seeing it on your shelf? And again, this is a great thing from Mark London from Mad Cave Studios. We told you Mad Cave wants people to read their stuff. They want people to check out their books. So before this second volume comes, now you've got a chance to get caught up on these two great titles and get a really cool variant in the process. Two sets. So there's gonna, we're going to pick two winners for this. All you got to do is comment what Jack said. But, and by all means, definitely if you're not reading any of these Mad Cave titles, we also got Battle Cats coming back. Battle Cats doesn't get as much love, but I'm still enjoying the, the story of it. Read both volumes, and the interior art in there is fantastic. So recommend that, especially for a reader buzz pick. But either way, comment down below. We'll pick two winners and give those out on next week's Bolo Show. Mm. <coughs> oh, man. Coffee McCofferson. But moving right along into that reader buzz, we're going to talk about Dr. Tomorrow number one. Another indie book with reader buzz. Now, this is one, again, we talked about this one on the last call show. Um, this is part of the Heroes of Tomorrow 2020 initiative from Valiant Comics. This is going to be a big year for Valiant Comics. I'll say a make or break year because they have the movie coming out, the Bloodshot movie coming out in 319. The publishing company is trying to roll out all of these new books. We're seeing redesigned characters. I like the looks of what I'm seeing. I just shared with Brian on Twitter the new Cullen Bunn Shadow Man that I think is going to be really dope. Um, and I've said Valiant gives you kind of a little bit of everything. Here, we're getting a redesigned character from the Acclaim Valiant days, um, Dr. Tomorrow new series, um, something for old Valiant readers, something for new readers. It's a great jumping on point, um, a great introduction. I like how it, the art style is almost lighthearted. It gives me kind of like a Hanna-Barbera, kind of Johnny Quest speed racer uh, almost feel to it. Uh, a lot of the variants have been selling out at major retailers. I think a lot of that is due honestly to low ordering. I don't necessarily think it's like this crazy demand for this book, but I do think that this is what happens when the market isn't putting a lot of faith into Valiant right now. And everyone knows I'm a Valiant fan um, and I don't blame the market, right? Because Valiant has taken a long time, but let's be honest, the sale to DMG really set them back. Um, I get, you know, these things happen, this is business, but that sale um, derailed a lot of the grassroots momentum that like, the previous Dinesh Shandasani, um, Adam Freeman, kind of that team had built, um, who are now part of the new publishing company, Bad Idea, who has made a lot of buzz in the last week for their unique distribution system. But Valiant now is left to kind of be in this make it or break it a year where it's like, will this movie be popular? Will this Heroes Initiative be popular? Um, will people read these series and become new fans of Valiant? It's going to be interesting to see. Uh, I, I'm hopeful because I just think in comics, like I, I'm not anti anything because I want it all to be successful. I want all those options, all those kind of flavors to be available to people. Um, and uh, I, I hope that Valiant can find their footprint in the market this year. 
And there you have it. That's going to wrap up the reader buzz section. Do us a favor. Make sure you comment down below. Let us know what books you guys picked up this week. And we're all aware of that one book. We're going to talk about it. I promise. But for now, we're going to move on into that variant buzz section. Then the first book we're talking about for variant buzz is Undiscovered Country number one. But we're talking about the fourth printing that came out. Right. And we don't need to go into a lot of detail about this because we've talked about this with the first print, second print, and third print, specifically the second and third print. If you watched Three Up, Three Down last night, you know we talked on the down portion about DC Comics and the way that they've approached late printings. Look at the way Image Comics, who kind of leaves it up to the creators and their own program and their own budgets, but look at the way the folks behind Undiscovered Country have handled late printings. They've done an amazing job. Their covers have been consistently unique and uh, colorful and really like, if you had no idea what was going on in the story, each cover you'd be like, what is this? Because each cover is uniquely different. Um, so I think that this has created a unique set of collectibles that I think people are going to want to put together. Yeah, I'm surprised it was actually a fourth printing. I mean, I, I, I've enjoyed the series so far, but it wasn't. But either way, we've had that discussion before. And kudos to them. And like you said, I do like how each one has a different cover. I don't think it's going to stop there. I could see these continuing to get released into new printings as long as a solid amount of books are ordered by retailers and as long as a solid percentage of those books are sold through, um, whether it's to readers or variant collectors. I don't think the market really, really cares. And I don't think Image cares as long as they're making those sales. And talking about those late prints, the next book we're going to talk about is that big hit book from Boom, Something is Killing the Children. And we have late printings all the way from issues one through number four this week. Right. And again, these are getting buzzed, but these aren't getting buzzed from like that. Oh, it's going for so much on the secondary market. Again, guys, I feel like the market kind of missed the boat with what the point of second printings are. Just because some get popular um, doesn't mean that that is what the aim of second printings are yes uh collectability is great but at the end of the day late printings are really a tool for the retailer to be able to sell other issues so this is great as something's killing the children hits issues five six seven eight the fact that they've now given retailers another opportunity to go ahead and get issues one through four onto their shelves with a new set of printings this isn't about the cash grab for issue one because if you notice the listing on the bolo list this week, we're talking about issues one through four. All four got a new printing. Not to mention the covers on them are absolutely astonishing. So I've stopped picking some of them up just because I can't afford to buy six printings of number one. But either way, the covers are gorgeous. And for those that are, you have those completions like we talked about. I'm sure there's people out there are picking up each one of them. Kudos to them. But kudos to Boom for having such a great story as well. And is James Tennyon on this, right? Yes, yes, definitely. So another great story and writer on a book that we're going to talk about here coming up. This next one, though, on the variant buzz, we're going to talk about this variant cover, but I want to take a moment just to talk about this. I'm going to move this up to the previous section for a minute on the reader buzz and talk about Death to Army of Darkness number one. We talked about this during the last call. Said I'm a huge Bruce Campbell fan. Love Evil Dead. Love Army of Darkness. If you too are fans of Bruce Campbell and those movies, you definitely need to pick this issue up and read it because it is just like those movies. But I digress because the variant, that homage, the ASM annual homage for this is fantastic. Yeah, I mean, fantastic. You're talking about a 1 in 20 virgin variant. Selling for about ratio, there's also a um regular priced cover b style um order open order uh trade dress version um homages are cool but homages are extra cool when it's one you don't see every day now I, there's this is before people jump the you know retailer exclusives have done this a few times with like mary jane and spider-man and things like that but to see it outside of the marvel universe I think these always kind of are cool and resonate well, especially from independent publishers. Um, Dynamite isn't quite like a Mad Cave style independent publisher, but still kind of like that small press as we like to call them. Um, 
I think that these, this is a book that's going to be, uh, it'll be in back issue variant bins for some time. And it'll be one of those like cool pickups. Uh, you know, in the short term, I don't think you're going to make any sort of return on investment. I think it's a PC pickup. In the long term, it could be a two to three times cover price type of book, just on kind of like that cool niche nostalgia factor. Right. And I think that kind of goes with this next book we're going to talk a little bit. And it's that Cobra Kai Karate Kid Saga Continues, number three, the one in 10 variant. Yeah. And, you know, we've seen Cobra Kai show before that there is at least a strong enough fan base. That's a gorgeous uh, cover. It's like that 8 bit Nintendo or old yeah. video game. Which obviously, um, I don't think the 8 bit stuff works for everything, right? We saw that almost overdone at Deadpool. one point. Yeah, we saw that overdone at one point within the hobby. Um, but again, remember, we're talking about an 80s property. So I feel like this is where creating cover work and variant cover art, uh, you know, the, the, the kind of like almost the art of putting together a variant besides doing the art is a thing in and of itself because you can take a 8-bit cover and you can throw it on a modern comic and it can be garbage or you can take it and put it on a book like this where it just seems to work and fit and hit in this nostalgia. Um, we saw the first couple that got sold on eBay got sold as IDW variants usually do for like five or six bucks plus shipping. Now the last, uh, only a couple are listed right now and people who have listed them are listed them in like that 20 to $25 range. I expect that's where this book will sit. Um, about a two and a half times ratio book. I don't think it'll get insane like that skeleton um, number one Cobra Kai book did. Um, but I think the fact of the matter is the fact that this is the second book that people have gotten interested in kind of is more like a proof of concept. Um, it proves that I feel like there there is a market for this. And for me as a flipper or reseller, I, I, it, I'm going to pay attention more to the Cobra Kai variant covers and see if there's a, a, a cover that I feel like is gonna hit with the market because I didn't notice this one until right before release and I kick myself because I go, man, if I would have seen that, uh, I feel like I would have been smart enough to pick that up when you can pick it up cheap. Um, you know, cause again, I, a lot of IDW stuff, if you're early, you can get it from anywhere from cover price to half ratio to 60 to 70% ratio, which is just unheard of because Marvel, you're almost walking into it at ratio. Right, and then you you get some buzz around it between the YouTube series and then, what is it, yep. QuickBooks commercials, I think, right now has right. Cobra Kai in there. But either way, the last book we're going to talk about on the Variant Buzz section this week is Bitter Root number six. And this is that, what, Do the Right Thing movie poster variant? I'm going to make a prediction right now, Brian. We're going to be talking about Bitter Root variants for the next few months. Because Bitterroot is going to be doing homage variants. Um, they're going to be doing them for the next few issues. And I really, ha looking at some of the concepts that they've looked at homaging, um, I think they're going to be hits. It, they seem to be focusing on media properties, movie properties. Poetic like, Justice. Are we going to get a Poetic Justice one? The one that I saw is Purple Rain. And, oh. to, and to think about that, like, have we seen that homage before? Yep. But the two times we've seen it homage before with that Batgirl variant and with the Snake Eyes variant are both extremely successful secondary market variants. Um, this is one of those books, like even here we are, we're, we should be talking about the fact that um, the Do the Right Thing book is an above ratio selling variant cover. But I'm already blown past that and I'm telling you, be on the lookout for that Purple Rain issue because I have no doubt that's going to be a secondary market smash success, whether it's in the short term or the long-term, it may be a long-term thing, but they, I think this is something that they're, they're going to do with these. They seem to be themed towards like popular African-American cinema, which I just think is cool and unique and something that they can do. Um, a team of, uh, you know, African-American creators minus their uh, colorist Rico Renzi, uh, who's, who's my guy from Charlotte. But um, you know, I, I think that I love these guys. I, we, I interviewed them at a panel um they they've it's on the channel yep they've interacted with us at simpleman's comics um 
these are these are good dudes. They're from my area of the country. Uh, this is kind of Carolina boys, Columbia, uh, South Carolina kind of a uh, uh, team. So I, you know, I'm a big fan of Bitterroot. Uh, I, I'm I'm glad to see them show up on this variant buzz section. And uh, as a fan of independent comics, I love this kind of stuff because I know they're going to sell more books. They're going to if these these variants get popular, they're only going to sell more issues. Um, which Hey, whether you sell them to readers or you sell them to variant collectors, it doesn't matter as long as you're selling them. So good for those guys. But uh, this is a cool cover, and I think there's more cool covers uh, to come. And, and that's one of those things that those old speculators, uh, or as you like to call them, speculators, wouldn't want us to talk about and be like, hey, look in the future at what's coming down the pike. But that's what, that's what I'm seeing. That's a trend I'm going to be paying attention to. I think that we're going to see bitter root on this list consistently for the next few months. And it's a great series. I mean, I've enjoyed reading it. It really is. And I'm excited at the idea for a movie prospect. Um, I feel like we always talk about optioning, but th this one feels different than there's always ones that you feel like you, you're more like, man, this is, this could be really an exciting movie. The concept of this book, if you haven't read this book, I encourage you to pick up a trade, but it, the concept behind this book could be a unique and fun movie going experience so i'm more excited to see this one get made than a lot of other um independent releases yeah. although i still would like to see southern bastards southern bastards is still my number one favorite that I, i'm holding out fx they're still sitting there holding the option but so either way that wraps up the variant buzz section let us know did you pick up any of these books what was your pick of the week I know tell you right now that we're going to get into Jack's long-term play. And for Jack's long-term play of the week, it's the one book that everyone's talked about, except for us so far during this show. We're going to talk about right now, we're talking about Batman number 89. This one had a lot of buzz for a character, but all I saw was doing some bird watching or something, binoculars. But there's another character in here as well, and I'm sure Jack's going to talk about it here in a minute. But Jack, tell us why this is your long-term play of the week. I'm going to first say that I almost cringe putting this book in this position because I kind of pride myself as using the long-term play spot to give you kind of an alternative view. Um, an alternative view of a book that maybe you're not looking at in the, in the, you're looking at in the short term and long term. This is a tough week. Uh, if you yeah, really, no one no one miss overlooked this book this week <laughs> <clears throat> no one overlooked this book but there isn't also another book where i sit and i go you know down the line this really could matriculate into something there's some variant covers that i feel you know are nice but i mean sometimes you have to just crown the king and this is a book where it, it showed up in the first appearance section it showed up in the reader buzz section um it showed up in the uh in the first in the variant buzz section that's the trifecta the bowl is trifecta you don't see that every day um and when you do you know and when you're in a situation like this you got to kind of give it credit i have mixed emotions about this i almost don't know what angle to take as we kind of delve into this um i feel like first off i'm not going to tell you anything you don't know right this punchline character has been one of the most discussed about um topics in the comics and i also know people who know me know that i tend to take a stance on this first appearance uh, stuff. So first off, I'm a firm believer in a first is a first, right? Having said that, I don't think simply a panel of your eyes is truly a full appearance. So I do think that this is a, what some would call cameo of punchline. Um, I think it does have an actual true first in it though. But yeah, I think that a lot of people are missing the boat and that that's a great point, Brian. Um, we knew so when we knew or when we got started getting information from DC about what they were going to be going on again, after FOC, which I think was a big mistake on DC's part, um, which is why we see the spike in price that we've seen because of the supply and demand great for speculators. And I know you guys are like, that's why we say don't talk pre FOC, but DC I'm sure wishes the orders would have been a lot higher for this issue. Um, but this, this is an issue. We knew that we were not only going to be getting punchline soon and punchline <coughs> and punchline is a character who seems to have everything you want, right? We know about what female lead characters can do. Um, 
we know Joker and what a Joker female henchwoman can do with what Harley Quinn has. But Brian, you and I talk about this. This is a dangerous comparable. We talk about comparables a lot, right? We see it in every aspect of, of, of kind of media. Whether if we're talking about sports, right? You and I are football fans. We're, go, we're coming up on the NFL draft. We're going to see a bunch of young men who are going to get compared to other guys who have done it. And that's always so dangerous. And it, I very much want to caution everyone who thinks this might be the next Harley Quinn. It's my long term play because. I look at this and I go, this could be a character that's huge in the Batman mythos long-term. I see this as a, a more permanent long-term kind of like sidekick for Joker. I think it could be an excellent nemesis for, um, for Harley Quinn. All of those reasons, punchline was obvious. But within that, we also got news of another character coming down the pike, the designer. Looks super cool, right? Costume looked cool. Uh, almost gave kind of a vigil from Daredevil vibe and a little bit of uh, Azrael mixed in there. A little and, bit of Red Hood. Yeah, you kind of you kind of looked at this character, this looked dope, but I, I feel like everybody's attention went to Punchline. And we felt like, I think there was some information that we were going to get the designer in like issue 94, where that issue where we've seen the art germ uh, cover with Punchline on it. And then when we started to get spoilers around Monday for this issue, we started to see that designer was in this issue and not only in this issue, in this issue more prominently than punchline. Um, I, I don't think this is going to be a first appearance for punchline. I, I don't think this, this issue is going to be able to hold strong for that. I think hell arisen number three essentially became a more valuable book. Like if you bought more stock in hell horizon three than you did in, in Batman 89, you may have paid off with that. <clears throat> as it really seems like that's going to be the, the, the punchline uh, first appearance. But I think that you cannot possibly sleep on this new character, the designer. Again, all of this is, is really, and I hate to use this word, Brian, because I know this is like a trigger word for a lot of people in comics, but it's all speculation. We don't know what James Tinian is going to do with either of these characters. We don't know whether these are long-term, short-term, um, whether this is going to be another Gotham girl. Uh, we've talked about, what is it, uh, Mr. Bloom. Um, we've talked about these characters who we've previously gotten excited for that didn't pan out. We just don't know. So when I talk about this book from a long-term uh, play standpoint, what I mean is if you're able to get this book for cover price, this is really looking at it from a cover price perspective. I'm not advocating to anybody that you go spend the $30 that it will cost you to buy um, cover a on the open market. Which right will probably now. drop by this weekend. <clears throat> probably, but I'm even impressed that it maintained through today. I'm, I'm really impressed by that. We did see the cover a and cover B combo drop from about 60 to 45, but I'm really, honestly, I'm impressed that this book is holding out above 20 with what I know the supply of Batman to be. Now, the thing I will caution is all of those midtown orders haven't arrived yet. Um, all of those uh, um, TFAW orders haven't arrived my yet. Shop. My comic shop orders haven't arrived yet. DCBS orders haven't arrived yet. All of this hasn't arrived, and a lot of flippers are going to put books up, and it is going to eventually water down these prices. But I look at this purely from a cover. If, if you look at it from a cover price pickup, Batman book looks like two Batman villains just giving it the eye test. Are they cool? Do they seem interesting? Um, yeah. So how can you not look at this book and see potential? Having said that, I blame nobody who cashes out for 30 bucks right now. I blame nobody who sells sets for 45 bucks because you only hope you can do 10 times return on investment in a typical comic book flip. To be able to do that the day of release is just unheard of. I'm also pleasantly kind of surprised that we didn't hear a lot of horror stories. At least I didn't today. Let us know if you ran into any, um, any tricanery at the LCS uh, with the pricing of this book. I didn't hear a lot of it. It seemed like stores are getting more and more prepared to deal with these kinds of things. Yeah, there was some stuff in our Patreon Discord, not horror stories, but just like actually comic book stores taking care of 
the people that have this pull boxes or their regular customers. Yeah. And that's the thing is like, that's the way to do it. We talked about this long money over short money. I'd rather have somebody pay me consistent money on a weekly basis for their weekly pulls than I would make 10 extra bucks off you this week. And then next week, you're not a customer anymore. Um, so these are actually opportunities for LCS is to really win over customers. Um, so I hope this was a boom for LCS I hope they enjoyed this like, you know, big excitement. It's great to have books on the shelf, Brian. If nothing else, you said a reason for people to come to the LCS, a book on the shelf that draws people to the LCS. And I know that some people feel some sort of way when the flippers come in there, but you know what? It's just oh, Vince McMahon style. <laughs> right. You know, and I, you know, the flip, you, you guys know the flippers, right? If you're an every Wednesday LCS guy, you know, that guy that's only coming in when there's a book out like this, right? You know, that guy, he doesn't come in every Wednesday. Um, he's here every other month when there's a Batman 89 or he's, he's got his key collector app out when he comes in, he's got his bolo list up like a jerk and he's, and he's, he's using that to, to pick books out. Um, you know, you know, that guy. Um, but, and I know sometimes people get salty about that guy, but again, um, this is the kind of excitement that can drive the hobby and hopefully, hopefully it just encourages DC comics to see this to fruition. Hopefully they see the demand that the market has for these characters and don't screw the pooch because they have something here. And even if they were planning something short, they can go along with this and, uh, and really have something behind them. It'll, I'm really interested to see what these second prints end up being um, that just passed FOC. Will DC come back with the, the, color change covers i've heard both i've heard that no one knows what the covers are going to be yet and i've heard that they are just going to do a color change so uh we'll have to wait and see i don't have a lot of faith um but this is an opportunity for dc comics who's been getting at least publicly seems like they've been getting beat by marvel for a while and now they've got the attention of the market full force and batman has the ability to do that yeah so i'm gonna take everything that you just said about all the the news and stuff from the week. We'll move that to the side for a minute. I want to talk about all that put aside. This is a great freaking issue. I enjoyed this issue. I am. I liked Tom King's run, but it was more of, I'll say, I don't want to say slow burn, but James Tenian's runs. What are we four or five issues in? I mean, it's shot out of a cannon right now. And this one is just full action packed. You're seeing Harley and Catwoman taking out dudes. And you're seeing Batman going full detective. Uh, I enjoyed this issue minus, you know, yeah, we have the punchline stuff. Yes, you have the designer stuff. And I think that's great. And I think that's important. But from a reader buzz standpoint, this has been a great issue. And I'm glad to be collecting this run. I always buy three issues of Batman. I, one for myself, one for each of my kids. And I'm glad this is in the run because it's been a great story. Yeah, definitely. And this is a book that has, honestly, whether we're talking Tom King's run or Tinian's run, it really hasn't mattered. When you're as popular as, as Batman is, it's kind of consistently hovers around that reader buzz area. But I agree with you. And it's not really surprising because if you read James Tinian, you talked about Something's Killing the Children, another book where as soon as the book started, right, you were hit in the face. That's kind of his style. He kind of comes out swinging. Um, pew, 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 pew. And you also got to gotta look at it and kind of – compare it again we use a sports reference earlier same kind of aspect of if you're taking over from a team that or for a, a team that is believed to be publicly at least it lost right the belief is well tom king's run was a failure he's coming in and he's using all his guns right after right off the bat um you know he's coming in and it's it's we're not holding back because we're the underdog here so i'm um, yeah i'm coming with joker i'm coming with harley um you know i'm, I'm bringing all of these tools at my disposal here's some new characters um and i i don't blame james uh tinian for coming out guns a blazing because you know you get kind of one shot you know at this one opportunity to if you had one shot one opportunity to be at this like a level um that he's at by writing batman he does this well he'll be able to write his ticket in comics. What do you want to write? You'll be able to write whatever you want. Like Scott Snyder did. Exactly. So there it is. That's Jack's long-term play. But real quick, before we go, 
Last week, we announced that we had some comic books, another great indie publisher, and we were doing a giveaway for those, and you had to comment down below who your favorite indie publisher was for 2020 or who you're looking for from 2020. We took all those comments, randomized them up, and came up with a winner, and that winner is Stephen. I'm just going to say M so I don't butcher your name, but if you're seeing this, watching this, make sure you send an email to simplemanscomics at gmail.com. Give us your mailing address, and we will get there's black box comics out in the mail to you. I'm not going to tell you what they are. There's some great books in there. And there's also a variant in there limited to 500 copies that we'll be sending you. That's right. And be sure to share your special black box bolo box on social media and tag us. Use that hashtag February bolo box and we'll enter you into the bolo box bonus prize drawing for February along with our Simpleman's Comics Patreon bolo box purchasers. And tag Black Box Comics, too, because they love seeing their stuff out there. And they're great and approachable on social media. And they'll answer any questions you might have, as well as share your stuff out as well. Absolutely. So, so enjoy your foray into the Black Box comic universe. And be sure to let others know how you feel reading those great books. And with that being said, that's the Bolo Show for this week. This is Brian Jack from Men's Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video.